The Whips have agreed that paragraph 9 of report number 2 and the motion in item 17, both dealing with the Ofsted report on children's services, will be taken next. Before the discussion starts on these matters, can the Council note that a list of non-committee members present at the Education and Children Services meeting on the 22nd of February should also include Councillor Marie Hansen. Firstly, can I ask Councillor Govindia to move reception of report number two and paragraph nine, and then for Councillors Belton and Ambash to move the second and second the motion in their names. Thank you. Thank you. We're here. Is it here? I've agreed here. An amendment to the motion has also been circulated in the chamber. Can I ask councillors Mrs. Tracy and Chair. Councillor Chair. Dawson Chair. to move and second their amendments? Chair. Uh, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the amendment to my name. Chair, I want to challenge understanding order uh, 29B. Not one single sentence of the original motion remains intact in the, in the amendment. So the challenge is, this isn't an amendment, this is a completely new motion. 29B of the standing order. The amendment was considered and has been deemed acceptable. Um, I agree. I have agreed that the request from Councillor Dawson that be allowed to speak for up to 10 minutes on this item. Speakers for the councillors, Councillor Dawson, please. Madam Mayor, thank you. Since the last council meeting, the Ofsted inspection report on services for children in need of help and protection, children looked after and care leavers has been received and reported to a special OSC meeting. As foreshadowed at that January council meeting, the inspection report makes for difficult and somber reading. It confirms an overall judgment of inadequate. Yes, performance was unacceptable, and Councillor Tracy gave a heartfelt apology at the last council meeting. Tonight, we reiterate that apology, and will continue to do so until we are confident that those children most in need of our help are getting the service they deserve. These are services for the most vulnerable and needy children in the borough, including those 235 that we all, councillors and officers alike, have responsibility for as corporate parents of looked after children. In all our discussions, it is these children should be at the forefront of our thoughts. Yes, of course, action plans training, supervision, management oversight and governance all need to be addressed and urgently. But it is for the support of these children and their families that such, such actions have to be directed. At the OSC, we had an extensive, serious debate about what had gone wrong and what needed to be done. And I would like to take this opportunity of thanking all members and officers who contributed to such a constructive and reflective manner, to the debate in such a constructive and reflective manner. And also thank those many members and officers who came to listen to the discussion. It was a real demonstration of the Council's collective determination to accept responsibility and to get things right. At a particularly dark hour for once with Council, I thought the committee conducted itself in a responsible way that did focus on the needs of children and families. And I would ask all councillors to act in a similar manner both this evening and in the weeks and months ahead. This evening, Madam Mayor, I particularly want to cover three main areas. First, the challenge for children's services nationally and here in Wandsworth. Second, the steps being taken to reinforce scrutiny 
and involvement of members of this council. And finally, our absolute determination to put things right. Colleagues will cover a number of other areas in their speeches, including a review of performance indicators, the role of the housing department, mentoring programs, and fostering an adoption. However, at the outset, I would refer members to pages 123 and 124 of the Council Agenda that sets out the strengths identified by the inspection across children's services. I don't intend to focus or dwell on those this evening, but we should never lose sight of those as well. So the challenge. Nikki Morgan, last, in December last year, said that every single day our most vulnerable ch children and young people are supported by dedicated expert social workers. Support that changes their lives for the better. But she also said that every single child failed is a child too many. This is why we want to see excellent child and family social work at the heart of the child protection system. And in this, she was supported by the Prime Minister, who has made very clear and explicit what is expected when he announced landmark reform proposals to tackle, in his words, some of the biggest social problems in our country. Wandsworth supports this ambition and intends to create a children's services that delivers such excellent services. A service that puts the child and young person at the heart of everything it does, with an unrelenting focus on improving outcomes and taking pride in improving the lives of vulnerable children, young people and their families. And I think that will be enshrined in the way we describe the services as we move forward. But let us also remember that this challenge is nationwide. As we've heard already tonight, over three quarters, some 77, 78 percent of local authorities are rated less than good and none reported to date as outstanding. Scrutiny and involvement. I've referred to the ambition and determination, but how as members are we going to ensure fine words are in fact delivered? As the report to council details, the OSC supported a number of immediate moves to strengthen scrutiny and member involvement. A new group of the OSC will be set up, modelled on the successful education and standards group that I believe has served this authority well over many years. That group enables members to discuss with individual schools their inspection reports and their plans to address any issues identified. It discusses the performance of, services air, of service areas and a wide range of education-related issues. And each year, it considers in detail the annual quality and standards report for Wandsworth Schools. I believe that group is an important part of the structure that helps deliver and maintain high education standards and school performance for Wandsworth's young people. The proposed new children's social care group will have a similar aspiration and objective. This will include reports on specific service areas and vulnerable groups, as well as topics identified by members. At each meeting, it will review the latest performance indicators. And Councillor Salia later will go into more detail about KPIs to ensure how do we ensure there is the necessary challenge and that, in fact, risk is being properly assessed. In addition, and reflecting specific comments from the Ofsted inspection report, the corporate parenting panel be, will be reconstituted. Members will continue to include councillors from other committees, as well as education and children's services, and fundamentally will champion looked after children and those leaving care. The panel will be at the very heart 
of our corporate parenting responsibilities. As we go forward, the intention is made clear in the amendment I proposed at committee, which was seconded by Councillor Belton. It is to keep the workings of these new subgroups under review in consultation with opposition representatives. At a special meeting of the Education and Children's Services scheduled for the 12th of April, we will be considering detailed costed action plans and proposals relating to performance indicators. This will be another crucial meeting. In conclusion, Madam Mayor, I cannot reiterate too strongly our absolute determination to put things right. And I don't say this lightly. It is grounded in a confidence in the collective commitment of this council, its leadership, its members and its officers, both within children's services and across all departments. And in this endeavor, I'm confident also of the support and challenge of the Safeguarding Board and our partner agencies in other parts of the public service. And as I hope I make clear this evening, both the challenge and the objective for all of us is to ensure that we do deliver the best for the children and families of Wandsworth. Therefore, Madam Mayor, I commend the report as presented to Council and ask members also to support the motion amended as proposed by Councillor Tracy and myself. Thank you. I have also agreed a request from Councillor Ambash to be allowed to speak for up to 10 minutes on this subject. I'm going to talk about two things. Firstly, the Ofsted inspection found serious concerns about Wandsworth day-to-day childcare practices and Wandsworth management practices and the leadership and governance roles of elected members too. And secondly, I'm going to talk about how we must learn from this critical report and take some actions to take responsibility and a leadership role in improving services and putting things right so that our services do progress towards good and even outstanding in the future. And I'm going to quote from the Ofsted report. It's 47 pages, but it's well worth reading from cover to cover. Firstly, I would say I'm shocked at how Wandsworth has failed children and families when I read the report. We've not just failed, we've failed badly. We are down two grades to the lowest possible grade inadequate, the equivalent grade when schools are put into special measures. So what does the report tell us about children and families? There are concerns in the Ofsted report about the bedrock of children's services. These are our children's social worker practices, both social work assessments and indeed care planning. So the Ofsted report says on page three, poor quality assessments are characterized by delays, insufficient account taken of children's history, failure to identify and accurately assess risk factors in children's situations, and insufficient engagement with children and their families. Some children have been left too long in situations where they have been neglected. And further, it tells us on para 26, child protection and children in need plans are poor. In most cases, plans do not focus on outcomes and do not set out clearly who will undertake an action with an agreed timescale. And even more worrying on paragraph 29, Inspectors identify inconsistencies in the identification and response to children at risk of child sexual exploitation, with some children experiencing inaccurate assessments of risk and insufficient protection. Those three quotes do reflect on the quality and skills and confidence of our social workers, but also importantly on the quality of our first line supervisors and team leaders. We need to do what it takes to improve social work practices, their responsibilities as defined in the Children Act, to help, to protect, and to take action in the best interests of children. They are onerous, they require high skill, and they require dedication to get it right. So a further area of concern in the Ofsted report is to do with children missing, not being interviewed on their return from going missing. 
So page 30 tells us, management oversight of children missing from home requires improvement. A significant number of return home interviews have not been completed within the time scales, and in many cases not taken place at all. It goes on to say the local authority does not collate or aggregate information provided in these interviews, and so does not fully understand the root causes of absence and missing ep episodes. This Ofsted report goes on further to describe children separated from their families are failed by the authority in being made in inappropriate placements. In the context of 16 and 17 year olds who are homeless, it says, however, in a small number of cases there are inappropriate use of bed and breakfast accommodation without it being clear how these children were being safeguarded in such accommodation. This accommodation is not suitable for young children. And further, the report goes on about inappropriate placements of care leavers in paragraph 87. During the past year, the authority has placed 10 care leavers in bed and breakfast accommodation for periods ranging from four weeks to 34 weeks. All of concern. And of course, it's pleasing to see that they acknowledge the outstanding work of the Children in Care Council, CLIC. It says, para, uh, page, uh, paragraph 73, CLIC is outstanding in its participation with the authority. Congratulations must go to staff and the young people concerned. Now, it goes on to talk about concerns to do with leadership and governments. And the, the culture of complacency has contributed to a lack of strong leadership and management and governments. The Ofsted report describes how Wandsworth raised itself in its own expectations of itself as good, while in fact it was not even in, requires improvement, but it was deemed to be inappropriate two grades below. This overinflated view of ourselves has not led to strong leadership and strong scrutiny. To quote from the Ofsted report, page 33, leadership, management and governance are inadequate. Lack of effective scrutiny by senior leaders, elected members and managers at all levels that they were not aware of the serious deficits in practice for too many vulnerable children until the inspection happened. I think there are implications for all OSCs. The party opposite must move from automatically supporting cabinet members' proposals and indeed officers' proposals. It is more appropriate to have the role of critical friend. Another specific issue I think we should re-examine re is party whipping. How can we provide effective and constructive scrutiny when the way we vote is predetermined before the committee meets. We need to reflect on that. So what does our, our uh, resolution actually do and seek to do? The Tory amendment is all about aspiration. It does nothing specific to respond to the Ofsted's criticisms. Firstly, we need to improve leadership, management and practice. Passing Roman 1 and Roman 2 in the resolution we've put will show that elected members accept responsibilities and are taking a lead in delivering the improvement plan. Roman 3 addresses the further work needed to review and ensure that appropriate elected member structure is set up. Uh, I, th I, I think the councillor acknowledged that that is an ongoing review, but if you look at the papers, February of uh, the 22nd, Education and Children's OSC, there are six member groups the Improvement Board, Leaders and Lead Members Review Group, the Education and Children's OSC, the new subgroup of the OSC, the Councillors mo Monitoring Meeting, which will meet monthly with the Directorate, and the new Corporate Parenting Group. This is rather overly cumbersome and needs to be refined, so it is fit for purpose. And Roman floor is to ensure that we are absolutely clear that the final draft action plan will come to the OSC in April as well as the cost of budget implications. It wasn't clear entirely from the executive's resolution. So in conclusion, this resolution is constructive and I hope it will help unite the whole council in moving forward. Please support this resolution. It will provide a good start in facing up to the current weaknesses in our children's services. It will help to provide a platform to improve our children's services. We owe it to our most vulnerable children to do this. And as the Children Act said, children's best interest is paramount. Thank you. Councillor Salier. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, the recent report on children's services and the inadequate judgment was shocking, both because it was unexpected, but in particular because it meant that we were failing some of our borough's most vulnerable residents. Ofsted based their report on a detailed case analysis which highlighted areas of poor practice, but critically for us as members, it highlighted the areas where we could not adequately evaluate the practice and its impact on children. The department responded swiftly to the Ofsted criticisms. I thank Councillor Ambash for listing a number of points, and he obviously isn't aware that they've already moved um, on the performance indicators to make them so that they actually flag up issues immediately to us. So, for example, some of the key critical areas of the judgment on the looked after children who are missing, um, the return from home interviews, looked after children in bed and breakfast data, and several others are already now performance indicators that are going to be reported to OSCs. Where there's intercommittee overlap, for example, on the housing issues with the looked after children in bed and breakfast, that data will now be reported twice to the education committee, but also to the housing committee. This change in governance will allow for additional um, oversight, scrutiny and challenge. It will also obviously be going to the subcommittees outlined by Councillor Dawson of the Education Committee. This renewed focus on governance will allow us to quickly put things right and improve the service. Alongside all of this, we also, as members, have a number of task groups in the next few weeks focusing on the key three areas outlined by the Ofsted reports. These are cross-party and will hopefully deliver a set of performance indicators that are robust and fit for purpose. We're going to be looking at children in need of help and protection, children looked after, and care leavers. Um, and what we've already started to do is identify measures at the moment that aren't providing us with meaningful insight and aren't allowing us to, to um, identify potential issues in the system. Over the next few weeks, the members of the Education OSC are going to come together with the senior officers in these three areas and come up with these renewed performance indicators. We will endeavour to find indicators which will drive the organisation forward by being focused on clear goals and that help us measure our progress towards them. We want indicators which will help us get to grips with the devil in the details so that we can immediately understand what story they tell us rather than just blindly looking at traffic lights. And once we understand the story, we'll be in a position to, to see instantly whether or not that's good enough for our children. Our indicators need to unequivocally flag issues to the OSC. They need to allow us to make meaningful comparison and push continuous improvement. We need to be certain that we have enough of a grip of the organisational performance to ensure that we never face this kind of situation again. There is a lot to do, but I've seen the vigour with which the team in the department are already working to put things right. They made a start before the report was even finalised and published. Now's not the time for us to lose, lose sight of the strengths that already exist within the department. The biggest risk, in my experience, for any organisation that's received bad news and is undergoing profound change is to lose sight of your strengths. What happens then is you forget to use them and you undermine and demoralise your key staff who are just the people you need to deliver the changes. I look forward to finishing off our task groups and being in a position where all of us as members can be confident that we have the right data um, presented to us in the right way in order to effectively scrutinise and ensure the best results for our children and families. I'm confident at the moment that the plan that we've got in place and the people in place are going to allow us to do that in time for our next OSC meeting on the 11th of April. Now's the time for us in the Chamber to come together, build the team, consolidate the good and mend what we must in order to move forward. I urge you to support the, amendment, uh, the motion as amended. Thank you. Councillor Hanson. If anyone knows me, they would know that I am passionate about the community and, the, and about the community as a, about the community. And as a community leader, leader, worker, and now councillor, I am lucky to see firsthand the good that ones of borough are doing in our community, like the Aspirations Program, an initiative tackled, tackled in the enhanced problems of the urban poor and very, success, very successful outcomes of working with families living on our housing estates, rebuilding lives, low self-esteem and confidence. Like the mentoring program, getting disadvantaged and dis disengaged young black males on the Winstanley into apprenticeships and education and allocating them a mentor, a role model. 
which has been successful and now extended to other surrounding boroughs of Wandsworth. I've also had the privilege of working with some of our looked after children, which at first hand, I know what kind of background they are coming from, also into getting apprenticeships and some even getting jobs at Battersea Arts Centre and happy doing so. As councillors, we should be using our friends and our contacts to get mentors for our young people. We as councillors need to stop complaining about what went wrong with the Ofsted inspection and try our best to put things right. We need to go out into our communities to understand and see, good work, to see the good work that people are doing within our communities. So let's stop playing the blame game, scoring political points and put what's gone wrong right. Let's remember we all sit on committees and boards. These are real people with real lives and not, polit political, not political pawns. The Conservative Party is committed to thriving people and families not failing. Let's work together by putting the wrongs right. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Dodd. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just wanted to say um, a few words about our Wandsworth Fostering Service, just to add to the debate here. Um, and in particular, the drive to recruit more foster carers. Um, this is basically um, a numbers game. So, for example, since April 2015, Wandsworth Fostering Service um, has had 127 initial inquiries. Of those inquiries, there were 22 that resulted in an initial visit where the applicant was actually interviewed in their home by a supervising social worker. But out of those 22, only seven are currently being assessed. So as you can see, it really is a numbers game. So in order to increase the number of foster carers, we need to increase the number of initial interviews. And every councillor here um, can do their part. Um, you should have all received a letter from uh, Councillor Richard Field setting out how you can play your part. Um, and the nub of the letter is really to say that basically if you work or belong uh, to a community organisation, a faith group, um, a sports club or a social club, anything where there are large numbers of people, the fostering team would love to come along and chat to those people and see if they can generate interest and get people to come along and volunteer for those initial interviews. Um, if you do know anybody like that, uh, the fostering team would be very grateful if you could open that door for them to that very first conversation. And there's more information on our website if you just, if you just uh, search under fostering. Thank you. Councillor Hampton. Jamila is 14 years old. She started running away. She'd get in a bus, she'd sleep on the back seat, she was going round London, she was going in the wrong direction. She ended up in foster care for three months, but I'm happy to say she's now back with her family. Not easy, but with support, She's now got a 93% attendance record and a fistful of achievement points. Jamila is not a statistic. She's a real, live, young woman that's been helped by Wandsworth. By the time Rhiannon was 16, she had a drug and alcohol problem. A very tough family. And I quote from the school, she was heading for the scrap heap. But with help and with the Troubled Families Programme, Burntwood and Wandsworth have worked through the many setbacks. And yes, there have been many setbacks. She's doing three A-levels and she's going to university. Eric came from a war-torn country to here. His family, all of his family were killed. He was fostered by two dads and he wanted to be a nurse. And through that support, he wanted to do, go a different way, to live a totally different life, away from the brut brutality and cruelty that he had known. He became a nurse, and yet another life has been changed. I've changed the names of these kids 
But they're all real, they all went to Burntwood, and they've all been helped by Wandsworth. On Sunday, I visited the Gandhi Museum in Mumbai. Gandhi said that every error allows a new broom to sweep the floor even cleaner than it was before. Yes, we've all got a lot of work to do, but let us all applaud Jamila, Rian, Eric, and all that Wandsworth has done for them. Councillor Belton. I'm often struck by the uh, personal involvement and kindness and frequently generosity of the majority party and individual members of it. I have absolutely no doubt uh, that what Councillor Hampton just said is very valid and very true and what Councillor Dodd has just said is very valid and very true. It always strikes me as very strange that uh, this personal generosity happens at the same time as uh, the financial uh, circumstances of the worst off in this country is getting rapidly worse, especially younger worse off. And that seems to me because the Tory party almost inevitably, and I'm sorry about the blame game, I was sure, knew this was going to happen, but uh, what else would you say if you're in the majority party? Um, but I knew this was going to happen. They'll avoid the grand systemic issues. And in a way, this report doesn't open those up very clearly. But it's terribly obvious when you have a prime minister who, uh, in reducing um, all kinds of benefits at the lower end and uh, makes housing more and more difficult for people in poor circumstances, then to set up troubled families units. I.e., let's try and resolve the 1% really at the bottom and leave the, ten, the next 10% to look after themselves. No idea that they might also get into the bottom. I find that very strange and very depressing. So here tonight, um, shocked like everyone else by the report, I read of a 17-year-olds um, in bed and breakfast. Well, I don't know the personal circumstances of everyone here. Um, and I guess in one sense, uh, left on my own, um, in the sense my parents left when I was 18, but they funded me. And I was at a pretty good university, most people seem to think. Um, and I got a pretty good job at a time when jobs were pretty secure. And we're talking about 17-year-olds, even if very few, inappropriately in bed and breakfast. Can you imagine I mean, how many people here, many of you have the benefit that I don't have, have 17-year-old kids. Can you imagine them being in a bed and breakfast? It's absolutely extraordinary. Um, and yet we've allowed this to happen. Collectively, I'm not saying I'm not responsible as well, but we've allowed it to happen, and we've allowed it to happen in uh, 21st century Britain. I find that really extraordinary. And I want to apply that, um, in a sense, to not just the Ofsted report, but to our response to it and what we say about it. There's nothing here about those very systemic comments that um, I and uh, I think Councillor Grimsby would be fair to say, uh, and probably others have been saying uh, about what's been happening to this council in the last few years. The rate of change, the amount of merger, uh, the senior management dislocation, the loss of senior uh, management experience. I mean, it must be thousands of years have all gone very recently. And somehow or other, we were arrogant enough to think that uh, we'd get away with this. Well, I think this is a bit of a reminder. Some people will say it doesn't say anything about other departments, but some here also know my concerns about a department I'm quite close to, 
um, where I think things are slipping as well. Um, and I'm sure I don't know some of the departments or areas of the departments to ha have the same doubts. So there's nothing systemic about this analysis which really worries me. Let's get down to the meat of the particular motions and amendments. Why on earth did the Tory party choose to amend our motion the way they have? Talk about blame game. I mean, if that's not oh, it, they put that down in their name, we have to have something in our name. I mean, some of it is virtually, uh, the first half, just a different allocation of words. It makes no difference. But the second half, they actually choose to delete. I'm sorry, I can't find it offhand. Yes, I can. They actually choose to delete the, the comment, establish a more transparent and open culture across the council. And yet, in the very same package of papers, thank you Councillor um, Carpenter for pointing this out to me, on page 153, the Nolan principles of public life is that we should be open as possible and give reasons for decisions and actions. So they actually move against what their own papers say because they can't bear the thought that it might have come in our name. Madam Mayor, I see the red light already. I'm amazed I've not started. But just You've look, at, look at the refusal to accept a minority party member on one of the subgroups. We're told because it would make no difference. Well, thank you very much. Um, uh, let's, let's actually try and see if we might make a difference. You accuse us of the blame culture, and, and yet you delete our existence on that particular issue. I cannot understand. Yes, I will. I cannot understand why such a trivial amendment is put here at the very time when just conceivably we might have pulled both sides together to uh, tackle something co cooperatively, because that's certainly what we should do, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it's absolutely right that we move as fast as and, and as efficiently as possible to put right the problems in children's social services and I think we're all, all agreeing that tonight but we can learn a lot from our own education department in Wandsworth both from schools under the auspices of the local authority and free schools and academies we have more than twice the proportion nationally of schools judged to be outstanding a stunning testament to our colleagues in education from my experience of inspecting with, Aus with Ofsted, schools are actually very well rehearsed in judging how well they're doing. The best have very robust self-evaluation systems and they continuously test themselves against national and local benchmarks. The key is to be completely up to date with the latest Ofsted inspection framework. You have to keep your eye on the ball. In fact, the goalposts don't move that much but it is enough to make a difference in how an organization is inspected. It's not rocket science, and I'm sure children's social services can very soon replicate the rigorous self-evaluation we see in our schools. Another very telling statistic is that a fifth of special schools nationally are judged to be outstanding. But here in Wandsworth, we have an impressive three quarters of our special schools which are outstanding. A case particularly in point is the Pupil Referral Unit, or PRU. Of their three component schools, two are outstanding and one is good. I mention the PRU particularly because it's educate, educating many of those children who are actually users of children's social services. The vulnerable, those that are looked after, those who run away from school, those which Councillor Hampton had been mentioning as well, those with mental health issues. They receive top quality care and invariably return to mainstream school and mainstream education very soon. The PRU doesn't leave any stone unturned. There are no excuses. It's an aspirational place where the staff all really want to do the best for their charges. Children's social services, I know, already have many of these attributes, but they just need to ensure the processes consistently support those attributes. And with senior educational staff moving across from education to children's social services, I know they've already started on their way to showing their real colours and a service we can really be proud of. 
So I support the amendments to the motion put forward by Councillor Tracy and Councillor Dawson. Councillor Mrs Stutters. Thank you. Um, I'm very grateful to all my colleagues for everything that they have said tonight. My, my speech is slightly different because I'm going to speak about a piece of work that I do. Uh, many of you will remember that when I first came on to council, I joined uh, Councillor Tracy on children's services. But I also joined the fostering panel. And I did this because during our first week, we had an induction with CLIC. And on the strength of what they said to me, I pledged to support I looked after children going forward. And I really do try to honour that pledge. So despite moving on from social, um, children's services, I continue to sit on the panel and I consider it a very important role. I'm not even sure if many of you know what the fostering panel does. So, so excuse me if I just run through it for a second. The panel scrutinizes the super, supervising social workers' um, assessment of new foster carers, as, as Councillor Dodd was talking about, when they are seeking registration. It interviews both the social workers and, and the uh, prospective foster carers. And it does this again a year later when they have a track record of usually having um, foster children with them and we can see what progress they're making and whether they're still holding our standards. It makes no decisions, but it does make recommendations and those recommendations are taken very seriously. It has recently been involved in a very large piece of work to review every one of our foster carers. This is no means feat and I think demonstrates the value of the work we do here in Wandsworth. The review was triggered, or the reviews were triggered, by the findings of a perceptive social worker working on the review of a long-standing um, couple of foster carers, and which, by the way, they would have been assessed many times before, but something worried her. And she had the good sense and the bravery to go to her managers and say so. I can't really go into details of what she found, but I would describe it as a pattern of unacceptable practices below the standards we expect. It's no Rotherham. None of you would be hugely upset if I told you what was happening, but we were not doing our best here, and we were incredibly um, shocked, really, as, as we are by the Ofsted report, and a little bit upset by what was going on. And the reason this had happened was because the couple were basking for many years in the spotlight of our system. They were very, very well embedded in our fostering support groups. No one ever questioned them because they spoke with such authority about fostering when they came forward. And the children's voices were not heard over years as they should have been. But this time, when the social worker spoke of her unease, we did take notice. Everyone listened. And at the center of the inquiry into the couple's practices, was the child's voice. The children that had been in care with this couple over many, many years, stretching back a couple of decades, were interviewed and found. And we also made sure that where they came to, um, where they felt that they had not been treated as they should or listened to, that we apologized to them. We had a lot to learn from them and a lot to learn from this review. The information gathering exercise itself went back over many years, as I said, and it left us in no doubt about the action we had to take. It was shocking, but we needed to face the reality of the situation. Despite lots of posturing by the couple, because they really didn't want to be stepped down, and they made all sorts of allegations against the council, and also said that they would sue us, and, well, no end of things, actually. I was on a couple of panels where I just listened to rhetoric their registration was rescinded. The result of the remaining inquiries, and these have gone on for a year now, and usually for a couple of days a week, was that most of the carers have come through with flying colors, and we're really happy to have them. We haven't lost a single carer that what we, want, we want to hang on to. But there are a few that were not up to standard, and those we have also persuaded to resign. And there were some who went before they were pushed. And I suppose what I'm saying here is, please do not believe that Wandsworth only reacts when it gets an Ofsted report. It reacts when it thinks it has a problem. I am proud that the officers were brave enough, bold enough, 
courageous in every way, to take on this vast task. They could have just swept it under the carpet. They did not, neither the social worker nor her line managers. And that's all really I have to say tonight. Thank you. Councillor Grimston. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Actually, I'll start with just a brief point where I might actually disagree with Councillor Belton on this point. I'm not all that sure that the uh, uh, amendment put forward by the majority party is all that trivial in points. And in particular, I noticed that one of the things they strongly objected to was the idea that ultimate responsibility for what goes on this, in this council uh, lies with the political leadership uh, of this council. I don't remember uh, deletions from motions in the past where the political leadership takes credit for things going well, but if the promise is now that for the next two years we will never again hear the political leadership of this council taking credit for where something goes well, that at least will be consistent and I think it's something we should look forward to. I gladly accept that rebuke. <laughs> I hope to be proved entirely wrong on it, I have to say with that. But nonetheless, Mr Mayor, where I do entirely agree with Councillor Belton on this is that we do have a serious issue before us here as to what extent we are debating something that just went wrong in one area of children's services or whether we are talking about something which may have more serious implications and more uh, profound implications for the work of the council as a, as a whole. I entirely accept the leader's view that there is a considerable resistance to change in the majority group. And I recognize that, and, and I've recognized that for a long time. But nonetheless, I, I would suggest that from where we are at the moment, is it really just a coincidence? Because this is kind of what we're being asked to, 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 uh, to, to, to uh, accept. That the one major part of what we do, which was subject to an in-depth external uh, investigation, is the only area, just by sheer fluke of this council, where the service is uh, inadequate. That is, of course, possible, but it is extremely unlikely. What is, I suspect, rather more uh, likely is that this is a wake-up call. We've heard this from a lot, and I, I genuinely hope it's, uh, it's uh, uh, sincere, because uh, I, I think that's exactly what this is. There's a theory in, in economics called creative destruction, which uh, members will be uh, uh, familiar with, that when an organization is doing okay, or doing quite well, but the environment changes without its noticing, which I think is what uh, uh, is generally accepted as has happened in children's services, then sometimes it takes a shock and a bit of destruction for the organization to remold itself in a way that it can respond to those changed uh, circumstances uh, out there. Because we have uh, a number of issues that I think we could be learning from here. First of all, I hope that we do see changes in not just culture, but also our skills as members, because I think both of those have been lacking here. I hope we are getting out of the day where the most important issue, the first debate for a new council uh, when it sits, uh, and as we did 18 months ago, is to tell the scrutiny committee that it must not even go and investigate an issue that's not on the uh, agenda at this moment. If, if the, there is a change towards actually empowering scrutiny, to get more involved, to ask the serious questions and to make a genuine independent point of view, uh, uh, contribution, then I think that is something that would be very positively come out of the creative destruction that this potentially uh, uh, represents for us. One of my very strong feelings is that now is the time that we actually start taking member development seriously. I had a very interesting discussion with someone who I think it's very fair to say is a, one of the senior members uh, of the council outside the uh, cabinets, and I'm certainly not going to say who it is, uh, but what we were discussing of, you know, what questions should we be asking senior officers if we want to find out what's actually going on? And we had a very interesting discussion about it, but it did strike me that I only have come across one other council which is asked against the idea uh, of, of actually getting out the councils who know how to ask these questions, those who do scrutiny effectively and have not slipped from uh, top quartile, as we almost certainly were uh, just four or five years ago, to almost certainly bottom quartile in such an important uh, service as we have here. Uh, that other council, incidentally, was Purbeck District Council, and they genuinely were isolated in a way, uh, both culturally and, and indeed geographically, in a way that, that, uh, that even Wandsworth is not. 
But I would say to the majority group and to the leadership, please, let's now have a serious attempt to give us as members the skills to ask the right questions. Because I don't think, frankly, that we have those skills actually clearly at cabinet level, but actually at uh, scrutiny level either to make sure this is happening. I'll just quote again the leader's last words in response to my question. I have no reason or evidence to think that it's issues, similar issues to what we're facing here, have affected other parts of the council. The most frightening thing for all of us should be that none of us had any reason to think this was affecting this part of children's services until this happened. And that really should frighten us very, very seriously as members. Like every other council, we do some things excellently here and we do some things not very well. But that's the point. Like every other council, it was probably always a myth that Wandsworth was in some way in a category of its own. It's certainly unsustainable to continue to, re to believe that now. We are a run-of-the-mill council that does a number of things well and a number of things not so well. And if that cultural change gets through, then at that point, this will have been something that has some very positive effects. I have also agreed a request from Councillor Osborne to be allowed um, to speak up for 10 minutes. Councillor Osborne. <coughs> the nub of the Ofsted report tells us, and it is critical, by the way, of all members and some senior staff, uh, it tells us that in children's services we have been too slow to intervene, too quick to close down a case, and that while by and large it is complimentary about the social workers concerned, recognises that those social workers, and for that matter the members and the senior directors, are prisoners of a management culture. A management culture in which reports further up the line are described by the report, by the Ofsted report, as optimistic. Now, it's a careful choice of word, is optimistic. There are other words and phrases they could have picked. In other reports on other places, they might have said woefully inadequate reports, sadly mistaken reports, woefully deceitful reports, but no, they said optimistic was the, the word they chose. Now that's the word I'm going to stick with tonight. Now, there's been a lot of discussion already in this debate about how much of this is systemic in this council. Ofsted looked at our children's services, but that criticism, too slow to intervene, too quick to close a case, and optimistic reports, is depressingly familiar across the entire council. And it's why we have made the point in our resolution that more transparency and an open culture are required in this council. Councillor Hampton gave us Jamila, Rhiannon and Eric, if I remember correctly. Not statistics, but real people. Okay, I'll change my speech a little bit and introduce you then to Lucy, Mr. Ancrum, and Tommy. Change the names a little bit. Lucy lives in Graveney Ward. Her problem is not with children's services, her problem is with the housing directorate. She lived in a council freehold property. She's a leaseholder there. She got a leak in her ceiling. The council eventually after much toing and froing, accepted responsibility. They eventually got it fixed. They were slow to intervene. But we discovered just a few weeks ago they were too quick to close the case because the leak has reappeared. She points out to me and officers of the council that the housing officer said to her, oh, we'll uh, deal with it by such and such a date, three or four weeks from now. She thought that was a bit of a long time, but she said, okay, Five weeks later, she hadn't heard anything. 
still too slow to intervene. A more serious case. Went to see him a couple of years ago now. Mr. Ankrum. He uh, lives in a, a council flat on one of the council estates. And he was at work one day and a fire broke out in the block. So the fire brigade came to his flat. His bedridden mother was still in the flat. The fire brigade rightly broke down the front door to get in and rescue her. So his front door was obliterated together with some of the panelling on either side. What did the council do? The landlord. Supposed to be looking after him. They boarded it up and said, leave it at that for now. We accept no responsibility for this. It took two years for something to happen. He did wrong. He refused to pay his council tax. In his frustration, he thought that was the best way to get something done. Eventually, we went to see him and discovered what was going on. I cannot forget, it haunts me to this day, the conversation with Mr. Angra. On his doorstep, talking about how the council had neglected him. And we patiently went through, bit by bit, how we could intervene and do something about it. And he began to shake with emotion and the tears welled in his eyes because finally somebody was talking to him about putting things right. The thing the council officer should have done right at the very beginning, within days of his front door being kicked in by the fire brigade. But it didn't happen because we were slow to intervene in that instance. I say that is a housing directorate, in my opinion, in disarray if it cannot cope with those kind of incidents. If it's not in disarray, what's the explanation? Are they being mendacious? You tell me. Let me talk now about Tommy. He's not a victim of the housing directorate. He's a vulnerable adult in Graveney Ward as well. He has cerebral palsy. He is deaf. He can barely articulate his problem and his circumstances and the way out of it. The Housing Association has put him in a flat with a carer. But the carer abuses him. The lady next door has spent ages calling the police and, ages and agencies to try and get it put right. Eventually she insisted the police go indoors and they discovered Tommy had his jaw broken by his carer. So they looked after him and the carer went to prison. Guess what? The carer has come out of prison and gone back into the same flat with Tommy. How long ago do you think the lady next door contacted the council to do something about it? Two years ago, she tells me. One of the most haunting elements of the Ofsted report is the child left for 24 days in a situation of jeopardy. We must all have thought, how much pain can a child have inflicted upon it in 24 days? Tommy has been stuck in that flat with his abuser for two years because this council has been slow to intervene. But what do we do? Well, we've tried to deal with the systemic cases here in our resolution. This Ofsted report is a wake-up call for this council. We can use it. We can use it to deal with the systemic problems, to get this transparency in the old open culture. Use this as an excuse and apply it across the board, not just in housing, not just in adult care, not just in children's services, even in the planning directorate with all kinds of things go wrong, because the reports coming up the line are always optimistic. I think it is possible, as several speakers have said tonight, that both parties and the independents can work together on this. We can put this right. We're bright enough, we're clever enough, we're committed enough to the problems in this council. But only if people vote for our resolution and not for the amendment that takes out all the central bits of it. It's just possible that people might see that that's what we have to do. At least I'm optimistic that the majority party might vote with us tonight. Thank you, Madam Mayor.
Councillor Mrs Tracy. Uh, thank you. I fear the um, uh, Leader of the Opposition's optimism might be misplaced. However, I um, uh, speak to uh, the amendment, but um, before I do, I would just like to make a point about uh, uh, what Councillor Osborne has just said about optimistic. Um, if he had read as many of these Ofsted reports as I've now read, he would realise that there are certain terms that are used um, by the inspectors and those that uh, professionals understand them. When they talk about an optimistic report, what they are saying is, actually, the child wasn't um, at immediate risk and there were no real problems. But the way the report was written um, assumed that without perhaps uh, delving into it any further. And as I assured this council um, when we met last time, no actual children uh, were harmed as a result of the social workers' delays. We have some extraordinarily good social workers who have um, traditionally always been able to use their own professionalism to make judgments and to perhaps prioritize cases according to uh, uh, the sort of cases they were dealing with. Um, no case that Ofsted thought um, had been delayed or had some drift caused a child any um, extra abuse or whatever. Um, the cases they had delayed were cases that they professionally felt weren't as important as the ones that they were actually dealing with. And that is traditionally how social workers across the country have always worked. They've been allowed a degree of professionalism. I agree quite rightly with Ofsted and with the government that in the circumstances that we are in today with some very different forms of abuse which um, uh, are unfathomable by most of us, particularly child sexual exploitation which is very difficult to understand and is very difficult to pinpoint, um, that every single case has to be dealt with immediately. The initial um, assessment has to be done within 24 hours to absolutely completely make sure that your judgment is right. That is what Ofsted is, is criticizing us for. And when they talk about us as uh, our reports being optimistic rather than um, the other uh, words that you used, it is because that is what they are saying within it. However, let's move on. Um, and I haven't asked for uh, 10 minutes, and I also, I'm not going to quote any uh, particular cases, which I'm sure we could all do. Um, what I would like to say is that I think that the enthusiasm and the coming together, and I know several uh, members have mentioned about, is this a sy systemic across the whole council, etc., and what have you. And what I do think uh, this Ofsted has done for the council, and um, I think it is something that we will learn from it, and I think it is very beneficial. All the departments want us to put this right. So we've been able to work with our other departments in a way that perhaps we never did before. So our relationship with housing, um, who have been tremendous in actually um, sorting out the immediate problem. We know we've got to continue and, and have a, a longer term problem. But um, the relationship with our other departments, housing and finance particularly, I notice uh, Councillor Carpenter has got a question about uh, my overspend. Um, all the departments have come together and we really are working terribly well as a council now to put this right. And we will do in the shortest possible time. Um, the only other thing I would like to say is that I have some sympathy with um, some of the things that Councillor Grimston spoke about. And I have, um, and those that were at the last Children's Services OSC will perhaps see some evidence of it. I do think as councillors we've stopped challenging in the way that uh, we used to. Um, whether that is because there isn't enough membership development, whether it is we're all too lazy to read the papers, something I've never been accused of. But um, whatever it is, we've all, we all lead busy lives. Um, we're not challenging um, like we did perhaps 10 years ago. And I do think he's right. I think maybe we do need some members' development to look at the way members ask questions. And part of that, of course, is what um, Councillor Salia was talking about, looking at the reports that we are given, particularly the KPIs, 
to see whether we are just being given the figures that um, look good and we're not being given the figures that actually will answer all the questions. So I do think, and I said it before at the last council meeting, this is a wake-up call and I do actually believe it will in the long term be very beneficial, certainly for children's services because we will correct the problems that we've got pretty quickly and I'm sure we will uh, be a good department before long. But I do think it will have implications for the rest of the council. Um, I'm sorry they don't like our amendment. I personally thought that we had improved their amendment, but um, I... Um, will you be closing any time soon? Yes, I will close by saying I, I propose the amendment. This matter is now before the Council. The matter now before the Council is the amendment proposed by Councillor Mrs Tracy and seconded by Councillor Dawson concerning the Ofsted inspection of children's services. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the amendment. And those against? The amendment is carried 31 to 19. The matter now before the Council is the motion set out in item 17, as now amended, concerning the offset inspection of children's services. Please indicate by a show of hands those for the motion. That's carried NEMCOM. Right, so we're now back to... So now question to the Cabinet members will now be taken. Is paragraph 9 received for information? Could those in favour of receiving it for information, please raise your hands. And those against, please raise your hands. Any abstentions? The, uh, the report, the, the item is received 31 to 19. 18. With one abstention.